Hello, welcome to Navigating to Success. I'm your host, Jeff Carlton, and I'm very excited to have with me today, Dan Rourke, CEO of Gestalt in Spokane, Washington. Uh, so an incredible company with uh, an incredible, what looks to be a, a fairly rapid rise to success. I'm sure Dan will correct me on that. But without further ado, I will toss the talking stick to Dan to introduce his company, tell you what they do, and we'll dig into how they got started later. Awesome. Glad to be here. Um, so we are a digital healthcare company focused in the pathology market. Pathology is really the world of, think of if you have a tumor or a biopsy or a skin graft or a, you know, or a skin lesion or uh, a mole, things that you're worried about, if those are scraped or biopsied, that material ends up in the hands of a pathologist. The pathologist tool of choice today is a microscope. So they take that tissue, it's actually put on a piece of glass it is stained to bring out the cellular content um, and the tissue content so that they can uh, see the offset and their world is really looking for abnormal in a world of normal. And what we do, instead of using a microscope as their tool of choice, we give them a computerized solution. Think of the world of radiology when they went digital 20 years ago. They used to be using film. Film was put on a light box on the wall. Um, they had all of this manual handling. Um, they had to curry the film from the doctor's office where you had the radiology um, image taken to the radiologist for them to actually give the final diagnosis. And then it was sent back. So there was huge courier services. It was a very inefficient process. The world of pathology is still that way because it is glass driven. First of all, I like to say the biopsy material comes from a surgery suite, a doctor's office, whether it's a dermatologist or an, uh, you know, a, a GI doctor. Um, you know, the, the big things we worry about are cancer, but there's all kinds of disease that a pathologist weighs in on. You know, think of Giardia, which is a simple disease of, um, you know, let's say, um, bacteria in water, but that ends up in your gut and causes a huge issue. Um, so there's so many different types of disease and today it's all very manual because it's a micros microscope driven world and the pathologist, unlike a radiologist, can't work from anywhere, can't collaborate with doctors anywhere. And it's, it's a very time consuming and if you're the one that's facing a potential cancer diagnosis or you're really sick because you have giardia as an example but you don't know it um, the process to get that diagnosis is not straightforward because of all of the moving parts that i've kind of described so um it's real-time collaboration uh it has the potential you could have a patient on the table and uh have somebody sitting analyze the yeah. digital version um, and come back to the to the treating physician almost real time. Yeah, so I, I, I think the, the best um, way to describe this is in the world of cancer. If you're in a surgery suite and they're trying to remove the tumor, when you wake up, the words you want to hear are, did you get it all or I got it all, right? Your question is, did you get it all? Well, they have that same question when they're in the surgery suite, and that's where they're actually sending material out of the surgery suite to a pathologist. Now, the issue is, is that pathologist has to, in, in today's world, they have to be just outside the surgery suite waiting for that material so that they can actually put it under the microscope to diagnose and say, hey, Bob, you need to go a millimeter deeper here. You need to take some more tissue. You haven't gotten it all yet. Bob would go and do that, come back, send it back out. And they say, hey, you got it all. You can close. That's what they're looking for. In our world, that can be done digitally. And the pathologist can be in his own office. He doesn't have to, in the case of community-based medicine or, you know, um, you know, let's say, let's take Pullman as an example or Moscow or Colfax where they're doing this in smaller surgery suites, 
you know, that, that's um, very inefficient for the pathologist because he actually has to be on site. In the world of digital, they don't. And so that drives extreme efficiency for the pathologist. And this is a person who's very expensive. It could be upwards of 500,000 a year in fees, you know, um, just for the pathologist. And then you think of all of the back and forth and eliminating that, there's tremendous gains to be made there. Um, then we also, um, once you're digital and are away from the microscope, now you can also deploy artificial intelligence which we're hearing about all over the place today, but this is an awesome example of how to use it in the world of pathology. It's already used very extensively in radiology because a pathologist is using, I like to say, Malcolm Gladwell's 10,000 hours to be an expert in the world of pattern recognition. This smells like something that computers are really good at because we call that pixel resolution. They can see many more colors of grayscale than we can with the human eye. Um, and it's very easy to train computers to recognize normal versus abnormal. We call that supervised or unsupervised learning. Um, and we do that at Gestalt. We build artificial intelligence or AI algorithms to count normal versus abnormal cells into in the world of, let's say, prostate cancer you know, form Gleason scores and positivity scores for cancer. We like to call that cancer grading. Nobody wants to hear that you're, you know, terminal or, you know, phase four, you know, um, in terms of, you know, where your cancer is. Right, and uh, thanks, you, uh, you answered my next question because AI is a hot topic right now uh, i had one guest that said if ai isn't on your roadmap for the next 12 to 36 months you're uh, already in a decline so it's incredibly important technology even if it's to take menial tasks off your plate or uh, or count normal versus abnormal so yeah that's uh it's fantastic you seem like you've been on that track for a long time so let me let me back up a little bit and get back to the business side what was your inspiration, your passion, the spark that uh, led you to start Just Off? Well, I, I can't take credit for the idea. Inland Imaging here in Spokane, and they're actually across um, several states, including Montana, where you're located. Um, they are a very large radiology practice. They went digital 20 years ago, and when they did, they built their own workflow software to do that because you know, products didn't really exist for that in radiology because it was all, you know, a manual film-based workflow, you know, environment. Well, in the world of pathology today, there's very little optimization around digital. Um, so there's, the workflow has not really been addressed. And I like to say, um, healthcare is very complicated because you have the the healthcare group, I'll say Providence Healthcare as an example, who has hospitals here locally and, and across the West Coast, um, who has an electronic health record. And we've all heard locally here kind of what's happened with the Cerner's, Cerner's new uh, EHR or electronic health record getting deployed to um, our veteran administration hospitals. Um, and so there, there's I like to call it the spaghetti infrastructure within healthcare, um, which is the, you know, the patient history information where they're actually getting to know who you are when you come in for a procedure or if you're sick, so that they can look at all of your prior history information. They want to look now today with the world of genomics, they want to be able to look at your family history, you know, is there any history of diabetes, thyroid disease, cancer, et cetera. Um, and, and then they want to not only know that for you, but for your, for your children, for your offspring. So th there's all of this um, big data that's being drawn around personalized medicine today. Um, so there's, you know, how, how do we tie what we're doing for the pathologist? And then I like to say the, the healthcare community that in the world of oncology or disease that is helping you know treat patients and so we have to embed all of this data that we get back into that infrastructure 
And so the pathologist really wants to do his work and be done, but then that data needs to get, you know, um, put back across that healthcare system, including the electronic health record. There's the laboratory information software, I like to call that the cookbook, to actually take the, the biopsy material and put it on the glass and stain it. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of work that happens there to make sure the quality is right, that, um, you know, that, that they consistently see the right um, uh, cellular content uh, in the right makeup, if you will, or intensity. And so there's a, there's a lot of work to be done there, and, and that's where we spend a lot of our time in the world of workflow. So Inland built this workflow for radiology. They kept the rights for it for pathology. What they built is now integrated into Siemens Health and Ears product, a huge group in the market in the world of digital radiology, or they like to call it a PAX, um, which is a picture archiving computer system. Again, making reference not to the film-based world they used to be in, or in the world of pathology with glass, not being in the glass world, but using scanners. Um, and that's what we do is we take that um, those images directly from the scanner instead of a pathologist looking at it under a microscope. Once they actually sign that case out with all of the data we give them, it's, it, it adds tremendous efficiency for the pathologist. And so I got very excited about that when Inman came to me and said, hey, you're a guy that started other business. You seem dumb enough to try. <laughs> Would you be willing to look at this and see if you could turn this into a business with us? Um, and they've been my biggest investor along with several others here in our area, um, you know, and across um, Washington State and I have investors in Montana as well um, and in Idaho, you know, kind of, but mostly in the Northwest um, states, I'll say, uh, currently. So that's kind of the, you know, how the business got started uh, in 2017. Well, it seems like it's at a a uh, pretty steep trajectory. So let me ask you a question as a pretty busy guy that uh, took a lot on pretty fast. How do you maintain a healthy work-life balance? Do you have any rituals or habits, uh, techniques that you use for a healthy work-life balance? You know, that's that's been a lifetime challenge. I'd say. <laughs> but yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, I love to get outdoors. Um, you know, I've started two other businesses I've sold into public companies and, um, you know, it's very easy to get um, so entwined in these that you forget about your day life. Um, and, um, I, you know, I have to be very cognizant or, you know, very intentional about stepping away and, and making sure family life and, um, and my hobbies um, are a part of my world, too. Um, I love to be outdoors, so I, 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 you know, last night, even into the dark, I was on a bicycle, um, which is a, a great way for me to, um, to, to kind of keep my spirits high and, and, and re revigorate myself. Um, so, um, you know, that's just one thing that I like to do. Do you find that you have to block schedule your leisure time into your calendar? Um, I certainly used to, um, I've, you know, I've gotten pretty good at, at, at being, you know, more intentional and in, in, in cutting things off than I have in the past. But, you know, I just went through a two week spell where I, you know, I think I logged 120 hours plus in two weeks, um, not to mention the airplanes I was on, you know, I think I put in 17, 18,000 miles in those two weeks. Um, you know, from here to Manhattan to um, um, Las Vegas and uh, uh, other stops along the way in the last two weeks and more travel coming. So it's it's an up and down battle, I would say. You have to kind of, you know, it's, it's hard to say no when business opportunities um, present themselves. Um, you know, I have almost 30 people on the team now. So, you know, we are getting... Um, you know, more, you know, more bodies to kind of attack the commercial side of what we're doing and in our development efforts. But there's always more to be done. And, you know, you can there's you, you can put all, everything you have into it if you're not careful, for sure. Yeah. 
Uh, for sure. And I, I love the one one word that you used in there that I thought was really um, that I use a lot with with clients is you have to be intentional. And the other word I use a lot is deliberate. If you're going to take an action, make sure it's deliberate and it has a purpose. Um, yeah. So I appreciate I appreciate that that term uh, intentional. Um, so we're. We're getting close to the time we have. I have two more questions for you. So real quick, um, what uh, what is your future plan? And I'll stack a question on top of that, which is a really poor uh, interviewing technique, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, are you hiring and what skill sets are you hiring? Um, so people that might be interested in coming to work on your team know about them. Yeah. So, you know, we're a software platform business in the cloud. Um, you know, we use a lot of these big um, software companies that are out there. We partner, you know, uh, and, and use, you know, Microsoft, Amazon, Google. Um, and, you know, we, we have our own, I, I think we've got 14 people on our development team today. We have front end, back end, uh, DevOps, um, QA test engineers. So, you know, we have a very uh, detailed, you know, deep team, but it's never deep enough. Um, we're always adding more resources as, as we get funding, as we get new customers. Um, you know, our commercial team is growing. Um, we're adding. Um, you know, another sales body, um, prefer that to be somebody, um, you know, in the Northeast region or in the Dallas region. Um, so, you know, we have people across, um, you know, the United States today, but we're continuing to add to that. Um, so, so those are a couple of thoughts. Okay. Um, all right. Last question, and this is uh, this is where we swing for the uh, for the upper deck. Um, what advice would you offer an aspiring entrepreneur or a, a struggling business owner that's wondering what to do next? Well, so I, I'll take this aspiring first. Um, I, I think you have to say yes to opportunities. You don't know where they're going to go, and often you're head down in things already. But um, you just don't know which opportunities are the ones that really kind of help cement where you're taking your business. Um, and so I think you have to be a really good listener um, and, a, and a team builder. Uh, and it's you have to remain, you have to be overly optimistic in the world of being an entrepreneur because it's hard. Uh, this is not an easy thing to do. Um, and in the world of technology, you're up against some really big players that come to the space. Um, but I think you have to stay very focused on little things. Um, you know, find people that are passionate, in my case, pathologists that aren't happy with the products that they have today and the way they're actually doing their daily job and innovate with them. And to me, that's the exciting part of what we do is finding ways to innovate and have customers that help us build that innovation. Um, we're, we have a, a very bright team that, 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 you know, wants to make pathologists successful. And um, I think that's one of the differentiators is, is we have a really good way of listening, leaning in, and then trying to be intentional about how we develop and build out that product and get their buy-in that the direction we're going is the right one. Fantastic. Well, Dan, uh, thank you for your time today. I appreciate you sharing your journey with us and uh, your wisdom, and hopefully it uh, helps somebody out down there. So uh, you can you can chalk up and put uh, digital or uh, virtual mentor on your resume. And for everybody that uh, watched this episode, I look forward to seeing you on the next episode as uh, we continue to explore business journeys.